I mean, the question is, I think we ask it all the time, is how do you end up being that person? Unless we see how these people are human, unless we see how they're us, and how they can end up there, then what's the point? There's no such thing as villains and heroes. We're not just born that way. There's a twisty, turny, you know, confusing path to where we end up, and I really wanted to show that. It's just gotta be an environment where we can all try stupid jokes, we can try different things, and uh, so I think our job is to also be a part of that and occasionally throw out a bad idea. We never really uh, sought out funny moments. We let them happen, but like there was never any moment where I was like, I want to joke here, or I want to laugh here. It was just that like, if it was going to be funny, let it be funny, but never ever push. And I remember reading the book and laughing, and then at the same time going, oh my God, we're all going to die. Like, you know, it has this weird combination, which I think is kind of how life is. I mean, you know, our idea was that we're living in these times that are so ridiculous yeah. and almost beyond comedy, but at the same time, so tragic. So we tried to combine both. We tried to have a movie that was tragic, heartbreaking, but also absurd <clears throat> and, uh, and, and sort of falling over itself, kind of like the times that we live in now. Um, we just felt like, you know, what is the genre of the time we live in right now? Yeah, so, what is it? <laughs> what is it? I mean, if you could tell me, I'd appreciate it. it. It's certainly not straight comedy. It's certainly not straight drama. It's kind of this absurdist, cartoonish tragedy in a way. I, I, it's the closest I can come. Slapstick tragedy. Yeah, Slapstick tragedy. I like that. That's I like that. What, that's yeah. what we have. Yeah. You did something that I didn't think possible. You used to did change uh, And... I hate to tell you this, but I actually like him more after the movie. Oh, Jesus. Than I liked him before the movie. And I knew all that, a lot of the bad stuff. I knew all that bad stuff. And I, and, and, but, but you managed to locate a human being in there somewhere. Um, I'm curious if you're getting that response to it. Well, you know, I had a, uh, about five or six years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine who was a screenwriter, and I said to him, I said, you know, the and I really believe this, and it was, it was an aspiration at the time, but I was like, people are good. People are like scientifically, if you look at it, when we're productive, when we're loved, when we love, we do physically better. Like that's an empirical fact. And, you know, so I've done that show with Will Ferrell, the one man show where uh, he played Bush. And by the end of it, Will and I were like, I think a little bit bad for Bush, and yet at the same time, fuck him. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it was this split. But I remember seeing this friend of mine who was a screenwriter uh, in LA that the one guy I can't find that compassion for is Dick Cheney. And right away, my friend said, I'm going to write that movie. So, of course, I said no, and moved on with my life and had children and did very well. And then eventually it came back around to this. And yeah, yeah, that's, that's what happened. I mean, the question is, I think we ask it all the time, is how do you end up being that person? And my editor said to me, how does this guy sleep at night? And I said, hold on a second. And I Googled it, and sure enough, there was an article in The Atlantic, and he couldn't sleep at night. There really was a whole article about how Frank Lutz is like, I don't know what happened. I, I really feel like, and I, I, I think you maybe agree with this, that like, unless we see how these people are human, unless we see how they're us, and how they can end up there, then what's the point? There's no such thing as villains and heroes. We're not just born that way. There's a twisty, turny, you know, confusing path to where we end up. And I really wanted to show that. I was interested in this subject, so I got the book. And I knew it was Michael Lewis, so Michael Lewis is always very enjoyable to read. I'd read a couple of his things before. And I picked it up one night. I was in bed. It was like probably around 10.30. Both my daughters were in bed. My wife was next to me. And I just started, ah, I'll read 40 pages of it. And I couldn't put it down. And I ended up reading the whole book the entire night. And... I think I got done at like six in the morning or something. And then the next, I slept into like 10.30 and my wife was like, what is going on? What were you reading? I was like, I just read the most amazing book. And I was telling her about it. I was telling her about the characters, what it's about, how it kind of threads all these different 
points of view and lines and how it's like a get rich story, but then ultimately it's not at all. It's actually the story of like, you know, the fall of the banking system. It's about corruption. It's about complacency. It's funny. It's heartbreaking. And, and she's like, you should do it. And I was like, you know, I'm the guy who did Step Brothers. Like, I'm not, I'm sure someone already has this. So I didn't even look into it. And then it was like probably four years later, my agent asked me, uh, at one point, we'd come off a pretty good run of movies. Things were going well. I was doing rewrites and fixes on other movies. And he goes, you know, you're at a place where I can ask you this question. You know, if you could do anything, what would you do? So I started naming some other comedies. There was like, you know, I, I've done some stuff that's sort of action oriented, even though it's comedy. So I started talking about some action films and he goes, no, no, anything. I go, and right away, I just, before I even knew I was saying it, I said, well, if I could do anything, I would do The Big Short. Like, why hasn't that been made into a movie? It's one of the best books of this age that I've read. And he goes, hold on one second. And he hung up the phone, and I went back to whatever I was doing. I kind of didn't think anything was going to come of it. And he called me back, and he goes, all right, it's at Plan B, Brad Pitt's company. And the script they have is kind of stalled. There's nothing going on with it. And I go, would they take a meeting with me? He's like, yeah, they were kind of excited about the idea. You know, the characters are amazing, but part of the power of the book is that I, a guy who was an English major, who directed the movie Step Brothers, finished the book and actually understood the shape of the, the fraud and the collapse, and that the information and the characters almost went hand in hand. So we knew it was a really unusual, challenging movie in that sense, um, that we had this like great cinematic side to it, which were the characters, but we also had this informational side that was kind of crucial. So that was kind of when we talked about the idea of breaking the fourth wall and the idea of like giving information in conjunction. I kept, I, I wanted to make sure if we're gonna do this movie that I fully understood how the collapse happened. So I kept talking to economists, I kept reading books, and then I would go back to my wife for starters, who knows nothing about finance, and I would explain it to her. So then finally she said, all right, I get it. So then I went to my 10-year-old daughter, uh, Pearl, and I would explain it to her, and she would go, Dad, I'm so bored by this. It's all business. <laughs> and then one day I explained it to her, and she's like, that's kind of interesting. Uh -huh. So I knew I had it at that point. You know, it was an interesting idea. You know, we made a choice early on with the movie that we weren't going to back away from the actual information. It's been a lot of amazing Wall Street movies made through the years, like Wolf of Wall Street, Margin Call. But none of them really ever go into the actual details of what happened. So when I was reading the book, I thought, well, wait a minute, you can do this. You just have to have a little bit of a conversation with the audience. Uh, so our idea was we were going to use pop culture. We're going to use this sort of pop culture that's around us all the time. And the question was, what would happen if that pop culture gave us actual information? Uh, hence, Margot Robbie in a bathtub. One of the things I think that's genius about the movie is the way you're able to balance these dramatic scenes with the levity. You, in sure. you insert this humor with, and I don't want to give away these scenes, but let's just say that you're able to insert this humor. Where did you realize, or when did you realize you wanted to do that, and were you nervous it wasn't going to work with the tone, or, you know? We never really uh, sought out funny moments. We let them happen, but, like, there was never any moment where I was like, I want to joke here, or I want to laugh here. It was just that, like, if it was going to be funny, let it be funny, but never, ever push. Uh, but I think it was informed by the book. I love that the book had all these different tones, that there was the funny section about the president of AIG yelling at people because they left the weights off the weight rack. And like, and I remember reading the book and laughing, and then at the same time going, oh my God, we're all gonna die. Like, you know, it has this weird combination, which I think is kind of how life is. Uh, and especially if you're talking about a bubble, an economic bubble, there tends to be fun times before it gets popped, you know? You don't, you would never wanna, you're never, the whole key to the environment for improv is you're never saying no, you're mm -hmm. never saying that's wrong or not yeah. good because the nature of improv is you're just trying it and you know that it's filmed, so it's only gonna be one take yeah. that you're gonna use. Yeah. So what you're trying to do is kind of push them in directions and guide mm -hmm. rather than saying no. If, if it became an environment where you're going, that wasn't good or that didn't work, you couldn't improvise because yeah. everyone gets too tight at yeah. that point. So. It's just gotta be an environment where we can all try stupid jokes, we can try different things, and uh, so I think our job is to also be a part of that and occasionally throw out a bad idea, mm. occasionally throw out a good idea. Like, you just kinda never know until yeah. you really jump in. Yes, I sell a pitch, but they always know it's Will Ferrell, so it, it's, I, 
I've rarely had to do the one where you come in and pitch colds. So no, I don't have great advice. You know, I can't, oh, well, I can give advice from this perspective. We now have a production company, Gary Sanchez. And uh, so we hear a lot of pitches. So I can give advice on from that side. And my, my big thing is I don't like it when people walk you through the entire story beat by beat. Like, I feel like I don't need to hear that. Yeah. I feel like you can give us the very broad strokes and say, you know, it's the story of this and the guy does this and you can kind of hit your major scenes in like five, 10 minutes. And, and then talk about the style and talk about the actors you envision and talk about some things you think could be funny. And, and that's like a pitch that I like. It's like a nice little 10, 15 minute pitch. They describe the movie, the feel of it, what it could be. But as soon as I sit there and I hear the person go into, all right, we open on a street. It's around 1231. I'm just like, oh God. And then it all becomes about making your face look pleasant while you're hearing it. And I think the bottom line is pitching sucks. Yeah. Vice was nominated in the comedy category at the Golden Globes. Do you think the movie's a comedy? And like, did you have any say? We had a big discussion about that with the uh, Hollywood Foreign Press. I, you know, I honestly don't know. I mean, we tried to make the movie to reflect these insane times where the example I keep using is when Donald Trump was up in Northern California telling everyone we have to sweep the woods. Is that comedy or is that tragedy? I, I like, if anyone could tell me the answer to that, I'll give the answer to what vice is. Um, Cause that's pretty horrifying. You have thousands of people dying, losing their homes. And yet at the same time, he's telling us we have to sweep the forest. So we tried to have both of those elements in this movie. I, I also think the W. Bush era was ridiculous and at the same time murderous and tragic. So they went comedy. They ended up, we all ended up leaning comedy, which I think is fair. But uh, I, I, I look at it more as a non, I, I think we're in an age now where I'm not sure genre plays anymore. I mean, look at Get Out. I Get Out to me just transcended genre. I thought, you know, with our movie, The Big Short, I thought we did a little bit as well. So um, I honestly don't know. My hope would be that people get really mad and upset and they walk out and find out who their congressman, how he's been voting, he or she's been voting on banking reform. That would be my dream. My dream would be that if everyone right wing and left wing just said, if you're not for putting Glass-Steagall back, if you're not for breaking up the big banks, I'm not gonna vote for you. I don't care if you're right wing or left wing, you don't get my vote. And if we did that, it would change like that. It would change in like two seconds. So that would be my hope is that people, you know, pay attention, that would be great. Realistically, one movie's not gonna do that. But if we could be part of an overall movement, an overall dawning awareness, uh, I would be extremely happy if seven years from now people did wake up to this and we were a little part of it. It would be great.